whatever. All right, and then you're gonna bring this up against Slagmar, or? Oh yeah, you know I'm gonna bring it up against Slagmar. <laughs> How? Because <laughs> How and why? That's some messed up crap. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, um, the reason why I wanted to bring up this sort of like knitting theory is because, <sighs> let's just say that, uh, art if you could call it that of it's been going down some dark path you know what i mean oh okay so you, yeah i get your point yeah yeah you, you you see what i mean though yeah, yeah, yeah like, okay i do i do yeah i mean i i i don't really want to do anything with my um my private parts because they're private Yep. Um, I, I, I do feel the relation of Operation Red. Apparently, she did this for 28 days. Can you imagine being on your jam rag and then all of a sudden <laughs> you've got like <laughs> this piece of knitting that turns red all of a sudden? <laughs> oh, jeez, oh, yeah. that's grim. Has <laughs> she ever heard of Tia? T toxic so shock syndrome <laughs> yeah, yeah. and so you you know this is going down some dark route this is six years ago right oh okay and so you know by the end of the day it's too late now right but she re really literally went grim okay yeah, she and, looks pretty grim already yeah but this is pretty grim. I mean, uh -huh. honestly, you can see patches of the stuff on there. And yeah. I, I mean, yeah, whatever tickles your fancy, love. But <laughs> <laughs> anything that do, does come from the, the fanny flaps, right? Or <laughs> the, the cat flaps, or what else do you want to call it? Uh, the minge makes me cringe, okay? It's not because, right, I'm yeah. uh, an anti-feminist. It's because literally, fee, I'm, I'm, I'm actually wanting to be sick just seeing the, the stuff. Oh, that's grim. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a disturbing quality about this. Th um. there, there is. Um, I, I don't I don't know there's many names for the stuff that you do do see in society right mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't paint a good picture and so what I'm saying is art took a very grim place it went oh, the, <laughs> a grim the a grim likes place. and dislikes ratio was quite interesting look at that Absolutely right. <laughs> like seventeen thousand dislikes for this video. Yeah, yeah. You know. While only six thousand. Uh... Yeah. yeah. Obviously, six thousand perverts out there. Because I, <laughs> you know, I'm not really for this whole uh, <clears throat> supporting the uh, the private parts of a person. Because it's private parts, right? Yeah. They're just saying it's private, right? And uh, I just want to talk about uh, toxic ma masculinity with you because I feel as though this is where we're at um, mm -hmm. in terms of today's topics and the music industry. Uh, what do you know about toxic masculinity before i go into it not much oh did you no. know such a thing exists um no i'd just say i wouldn't do it no no well yeah no, let's let's just go from you know ground zero or whatever so. ground zero <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's based on the basics, the below the belt region. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
But um, on a serious note, right? Um, apparently, this is medical news today. And they okay. say, what to know about toxic masculinity? Toxic mm -hmm. masculinity is a term often used to describe the negative aspects of exaggerated masculine traits. The term has evolved over time and has a place both in academia and everyday speech. Huh? <laughs> no, man. This was actually written, right, yeah. by somebody in 2020. So we're talking virus times here now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's now a pandemic for men. <laughs> okay. This is not a joke. Right? Yeah. <laughs> because even though I might say, you know, vaginal knitting, and I'm going to talk about slag more in a more moment, um, and what it means, uh, I'm going to talk about toxic masculinity and why i think it's a load of bs okay okay go ahead okay you you can argue otherwise if you want right well yeah it depends on your argument all right so frequent use of the phrase may result in some people misinterpreting what toxic masculinity is which could lead to further misunderstanding and irritation the concepts underlining traditional masculinity are complex some people might find it difficult to challenge archaic thinking and to move past these negative aspects of traditional and outdated male values and it can take time to do so is essential for first to understand what toxic masculinity is and why it exists to be honest with you right i don't care right <laughs> I, I really don't care even if they want to put it in the journal of psychology because <laughs> i feel anything that's negative about men or women in general say f you harder <laughs> whatever you want to call it but apparently this harmful concept of masculinity also places significant importance on manliness based on strength lack of emotion self-sufficiency dominance and sexual virility take a deep breath mm. because i don't think that a man is a man if you take those strengths away from him you know um and then you mansplain no everyone can mansplain a woman can mansplain and be condescending as heck you know but on the notion of this equality thing especially in music or displaying what traits make us real men and whatnot apparently these over emphasis of these traits may lead to harmful imbalances in someone trying to live up to these expectations some examples include aggression sexual aggression or control showing no emotion or expression sus suppressing That's emotions <clears throat> hyper competitiveness needing to dominate or control others a tendency towards or glorification of violence isolation low empathy entitlement and chauvinism and sexism Mm -hmm. uh that's toxic ma masculinity so what the hell's femini uh, feminism right if it isn't chauvinism and sexism especially when you have someone trying to knit from their vajiji <laughs> right <laughs> 
like, like I don't know what else to say apart from it's sick, right? You, you, <laughs> right? And yeah. and so going back to how we used to not give a damn, okay, about this whole uh, art being a form of expression for both the sexes um and imposing a sort of uh, an equality basis i'm going to show you an article that will also refer back to slagmore right it says blair black metal kunstner jeg ser often ting jeg har lagt på t-shirtene til folk and this is Janne Weiss Hansen and she is the one that makes the t-shirts mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah yeah design yeah. But, but she doesn't design it from a vajiji <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, most you. people don't Janne here um uh, I will say that um, most people don't. Most yeah. people have that fortunately yeah. expression. Yeah, exactly. And you know what I'm really, really glad about? Yeah. That during the 1990s, because this article is based on how she did enslaves teacher, immortal, and Burism. I don't know mm -hmm. whether or not you knew that she was an artist that did these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and she shows real talent you know what i mean mm -hmm. hold on hold on hold on i just want to respect her artwork a little bit more you know so i'm gonna make this the central focus yeah go on. the conversation so basically even her logos and everything else like is really important mm -hmm. um you know, she did that for Satyricon. Oh, yeah. I have the CD. Yeah. Uh, uh, I want to buy the um, actual LP. Mm -hmm. In the LP, it gives you a description of her, her work as well. And you can see the detail in her, her construction of it, which I'm very impressed about. Mm -hmm. um, hold on. It's very difficult for me to like get the page to do what I want it to. Yeah, I see um, that. So she's got this grim one there that um, it's great. And we were talking about our album covers, weren't we? Mm -hmm. The other day. And oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going back to this point, you know, that mm -hmm. um, our creativity and the age post virus we need to go back to this okay <clears throat> <laughs> okay even even her logos are a pretty damn dippity amazing that's enslaved mm -hmm. yeah the old logo yeah and that's her so mm -hmm. and what makes me proud is um just to talk about this um because from your perspective what do you think about women uh, in black metal what do you think about them well as far as i know it's uh, uh you know mostly it's it's these graphic designers and uh, uh, maybe uh, write lyrics for some bands i uh, that that's what i know but but when it comes to fronting like, like actually performing the music there's not so many women that's true like you know like we, we of course we have Trisha on drums and Urar, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's a uh, like I, I can't even mention like five female drummers in black metal i think she's an amazing drummer as well yeah so she's really good she's really she, good she um she takes it to another level as well mm -hmm. like re really with the bass and the mm -hmm. tops um yeah but not that so many musicians i mean like i think the most well-known band is uh dark and nocturne slaughter called i mm -hmm. think they're german 
if I'm not so sure. Yeah, they they have a, a girl who's singing and playing the guitar at the same time. There, there is a German band that has a, a, a drummer, and I can't remember the name of them as well. And they get dressed up in the most mundane outfits. So mm -hmm. you can't tell that she is a female drumming because of her outfits. But uh -huh. she's going for it 10 hell for leather, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what I want to say about feminism is it's taken a dark route because there was no decorum in that video. And artists like these, right, like, you know, wise, handsome, um, <clears throat> she, she does go to a lovely level of showing her technique, even in her tattoos. Um, <clears throat> and uh, she also shows values and principles that we probably even didn't even realize were evolving in the music you know mm -hmm. if you're going to do something ah, oh, it's not selfish you know yep. it's not about are oh, your woman bits and just your woman bits it's to do with supporting that industry and you don't talk about your sex or you don't talk about anything else like that it's to do with who you are what you're all about mm -hmm. <clears throat> don't know whether or not you noticed that yeah. But um, going back to uh, body painting, <clears throat> sorry about that. Oh, but um, I just wanted to show that it's not just, woo, it's not just uh, women that body paint or get body painted, it's men too. Uh -huh. And uh, whoa, that's a bit much. But. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to show that even a man does these uh, body paintings and things like that. And it's not feminist. It's, it's got nothing to do with, you know, you're just selfish and your own bits. I, I don't think that's anything to do with whatever. That's the toxicity of it all, mm -hmm. but I don't think you should call it toxic masculinity. I don't think that it should be given just a male name. I feel, I feel as though feminism on the whole has gone freakily sideways. You know what I mean? Just saying. Yeah. I but mean, these people are fucking aliens, man. Look at them. <laughs> 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 I just I just wanted to just like show that there is a possibility that we're going down some dark seeded route and we don't need to go there you know what I mean um, mm -hmm. uh, of separating the sex and if we do that in music then there's po no point and we've we've been slowly going down that slippery slope so anyway, I was just going to show you also, you know, the uh, feminism and subversion thing. Because me and you talked about subversion ages ago. Remember that? Communist subversion, yeah. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so this has actually, you know, been a topic of discussion within theatre, but never in music. You know what I mean? So, subversion, violence, gender disruption, feminist engagements with Euripides, the Bachea. And in this article, it actually shows that there's like violence within uh, the women, and uh, there can be that aggressive side that's played. And uh, even to be misogynistic is a part of a Greek dilemma and a tragedy. Just saying. 
because I'm building up to the next All right. one. Okay. Okay. Because I wanted to know how you feel about the witch burning. The witch burnings. Yeah. It was um, it was the highlight uh, of show business back in the days, I suppose. Witch burning and worshiping. Yeah. Uh, it's really ridiculous, um, I think, when it comes to the Inquisition and all that, um, all that stuff. But I think it's also an interesting question to ponder. Uh, can we judge our past based on uh, the things we know in the present? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, uh, I think it's difficult to put our mindset back into medieval times. Mm -hmm. But a friend of mine once uh, once said that you know back in the days like you know as as horrible as it looks with the Inquisition for us and all that stuff mm -hmm. like the common mentality was even worse. So what he suggested for me was that like let's say someone does some um, uh, bestiality, so like I don't know, like there is a farmer or something fucks its own pig or something. Uh, of course, the Inquisition will go after this person. But mm -hmm. had it not, then the people would be so upset that they would just, you know, like get their uh, uh, sights and uh, whatever they have and then just uh, shred this guy to pieces. Mm. So that's, uh, that's it. And uh, so like the Inquisition, I think, was, was a result of like uh, there, there might have been an actual demand in it, but I'm not saying it's a uh, hundred percent true. I'm just theorizing mm. because um, it's literally impossible for us to know what people were thinking back in the days, right? I mean, there has been documents saying that uh, perhaps they thought that witches were quite bad, you know, because they were. Um, incredibly sexist towards the whole uh, movement of paganism and mm -hmm. things like that yeah. um so you know paganism in itself wasn't actually as brutal as everybody makes out to be it's only the war part that was brutal yeah. but actually in societies themselves the, the people who were most brutal were the ones who used a belief system and then indoctrinated the people to go mm -hmm. on a witch hunt. Yeah. I mean, that's basically where the witch hunt part comes from. Mm -hmm. And so these, if you went back into the times of a, about 400 years ago, 300 years ago, and feminists they would be witch hunted i'm just saying and i'm just, yeah. gonna just like bring this up so i can like bring up slack more because <laughs> i feel as though it's it's a nice topic uh <clears throat> discussion and uh it also highlights you know what 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 happened back in the day um uh -huh. And, you know, we're talking about some proper destruction. We're talking about people wearing masks that were like, you know, the plague was here. Yeah, and it's still in. Yeah. All of a sudden we have the plague and we have all of these things that are, you know, slowly yeah. ebbing us away all of a sudden. And these feminists... Are they witches? Are they going to be hunted? I'm just saying. <laughs> no, it's, now it's the feminists who hunt. It's now the feminists who hunt. <laughs> and then it's your toxic masculinity that is challenged. <laughs> and then you are definitely in trouble. Um, but um, yeah. I mean, the only reason why I'm pointing out that uh, Slagmore exists is that uh, 
the creativity and the boldness of this and the time of the plague um, especially is a, a highlight because we are going through our modern day plague right now and we're being told that men are a problem um, and 400 years ago you know if a woman spoke out um, and did anything evil or whatever or tried to get her own back red letter day or something you know mm -hmm. uh, they were burned at the stake yep. so <laughs> you, you see where I'm going with this right I guess I so to, yeah I had to, I had to turn this down, round to slag more because I know that it was an epic time at Inferno Festival and <laughs> this witch burning and I'm showing everybody now um, but it also represents how we've evolved um, and now the tables have turned and it's actually men that are going to be hunted and uh, burnt at the burnt to the cross you know mm -hmm. uh, upside down <laughs> but, <laughs> but no i just feel as though in the metal industry really you're meant to have a little bit of decorum as a woman mm -hmm. um, you're not meant to show your uh sexual side so much i don't think in black metal in other parts of metal yeah man you do the mud wrestling you show you you do wet t-shirt competition and you do all those kind of things but in black metal in general there's a respect for men i don't know whether or not you've noticed that no i was just saying that i didn't notice too much of a um, difference in um, like uh, gender roles or whatever in mm -hmm. in black metal it's uh I think, as with most metal genres, uh, there are less women, of course, mm -hmm. but that's it. Like, okay, going back to Fear Factory again, remember uh, in 2017 when they played, was it 17? Maybe 16. I think maybe it was 16, actually. But it doesn't matter, like, like you know, Burton said, like, oh, wow, we haven't seen so many women in our crowds lately. There were, like, what, like three, four women at the concert, you know? Mm -hmm. including you and then he like makes this remark what the hell so um so i don't know but respect for men that's what you were saying yeah um, it is a male dominated industry so i won't really like it's a male dominated industry but why is that like it's uh i don't know like i i really don't um i don't like to touch upon the points i just think that we've gone down some dark path before pre-virus right because that video was six years ago that vag knitting okay uh, and personally i feel as though it's it's really important to, to know, do vag knitting. yeah <laughs> you know if you want to do that in your spare time during this virus period of lockdown yeah go right ahead go for it, yeah. i'm not buying it <laughs> Especially if you're on your jam rags, I mean, uh, that puts that <laughs> that term really into context. Um, <clears throat> but no, I I just want to express that uh, witch in uh, witch hunting and witch burning has turned the other way. Yep. And um, I like the industry the way that it is. I don't really want to change it. I feel as though we've got idols and we love them, we respect them. We feel as though, you know, that the talent is is something to behold because in this day and age, like I said, we've got the Simon Cowles. But what I don't understand is why isn't the fair? Why is it that the feminists aren't attacking Simon Cowell and you know these great big? Um, media companies that stick to this format of you know we're just going to give you the same rehashed thing like the voice and 
X factor and Britain's got talent and Hungary's got talent and no. France has got talent and all of these kind of things. Why are we not attacking the industry? Because obviously people have got talent as talent. And uh, this is where the witch hunt has began. Um, and you said uh, before you thought that the industry was dying. This is one of my arguments for it dying, dude. Mm -hmm. um, toxic masculinity is now a medical term. And I feel as though that is so pungent. It's, it's horrible. It's like watching something rotting from the outside in. And it's horrible. Mm -hmm. Just what, you know, watching this flame burning episode now. I mean, you know, it's epic. And we really have to stand up against this. Um, but no, I, I mean, as though the, the value of our, our uh, quality of life has changed. We've had austerity, like we've been talking about. And now we're being attacked for being just ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we are on a witch hunt. Yeah, I guess. And that's where the slagmore part comes in. Which side are you on, man? <laughs> 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 I mean, the, the, the fact that you could have an audience that watches this yeah. was intense, man. It was just the best. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't want anything to change. Uh, I didn't want it to change. I thought that it was incredible just being there. I thought that the whole atmosphere was loving. There was nothing bad. But now all of a sudden, Operation Red. And we're going to be talking about cat flaps and uh, slippery slides. And we won't be able to say the word moist. <laughs> Which um, strange. is strange now history. changed. <laughs> but um, yeah, on a serious note, yeah. Um, I feel as though, you know, talking about how this isn't a passionate endeavor and that... Uh, now we're 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 in the era of the witch hunt the virus has taken over mm. and maybe we've become a load of zombies what are your thoughts on that oh we have been zombies already yeah you think yeah, so well, aren't we yeah i but feel that yeah it's uh <laughs> i i think it's sort of cliche to say but but I mean, at the end of the day, it's uh, we're just uh, consumer zombies. I feel as though the class distinction thing is very important for us. Yeah. You know, to actually say, you know, hold on a minute, I can afford to get this, and I can do this, and I can participate in society a little bit more. It's really intrinsic for us, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I've got value, I've got status, you know? And then all of a sudden they want to take away our values and our status and, you know, replace us with this drone thought. 